Welcome back. Newsflash, volcanoes are hazardous. Watch out. So, uh, but, but how hazardous? How dangerous are volcanoes? They're, they're actually different types of volcanoes, and they kind of each have their different dangers associated with them. First question I usually get is, well, where are most active volcanoes? In something called the Ring of Fire, aptly named. So most volcanoes in general are near plate boundaries. Uh, convert, convergent boundaries, excuse me, uh, tend to contain the most active volcanoes currently. And approximately two-thirds of all active volcanoes on Earth are within the Ring of Fire. So the kind of all around the Pacific plate along again this, this fictitious ring of fire starting from the t down in South America up through Central and North America, Alaska over into Russia and Japan and down into the Philippines and Indonesia, uh, down through the Pacific and New Zealand. And you'll notice the type of boundary uh, at the uh, most associated with the ring of fire is going to be convergent boundaries. So convergent boundaries, big earthquakes, and active volcanoes. So that's where most of the Earth's active volcanoes are. If there's a big eruption, it's probably going to be somewhere along here. In fact, the eruption that occurred in Tonga in early in 2022, uh, that happened well, right here, right here, uh, right right off the islands of, of Tonga. So right, right in the Ring of Fire, in the convergent boundary area, of course. So what is a volcano? Well, a volcano is a vent through which lava, solid rock debris called tephra, uh, ash, and gases erupt from uh, Earth's from within Earth's crust to its surface. Um, it can be explosive or it can be non-explosive. <coughs> Not all volcanoes pose the same hazards. What you're seeing here. And this volcano has a lot of lava, very spectacular to look at. This is a very large lava jet compared to these trees. This is probably 100, 200 feet tall. But this is actually a gentle eruption. It's not explosive. Really, the only thing coming out of this volcano is lava and maybe some gas. It's not going to explode. It's just going to ooze out lava. So just get out of the way. So it's actually not that dangerous. This type of volcano here is not that dangerous to life. So, uh, in any case, just re review real quick. What's the difference between lava and magma? Right. Lava is molten rock that reaches the Earth's surface. Magma is molten rock below Earth's surface. So, lava is one thing that comes out of a volcano. <clears throat> There's actually two types of lava. The first is called aa. -uh. So, aa -uh is very rough, very jagged surfaced uh, lava. It has a higher viscosity, so it moves much slower. Um, it moves at 0 0.002 miles per hour, which is about uh, about 10 feet per hour. That's not very far. All right, it's about the length of a car in one hour. So here comes some lava. I'm gonna just get out of the way. So lava, at least this type of lava, is is not very deadly usually. Get out of the way. But anything that's in its way, houses, forests, whatever, well, yeah there's going to be some destruction. You can't really move a house. Well, some you can, I know. But you can't really move a forest. So when this lava does make its way through a neighborhood, anything it comes into contact with, it's obviously going to destroy. So much more, lava in general is much more um, uh, of, a, of a hazard for, you know, property, not so much on life. So here's a big flow of, uh, of lava, very rocky, very slow moving. So again, you can see uh, I mean, hazardous to property, but again, you can just get out of the way. So just some examples of very slow moving. And it's got to be painful to see this very slow moving uh -uh lava flow kind of making its way to your house and you can't really do anything. Yeah. The other type of lava is called pahoehoe. Both of these are Hawaiian terms. Pahoehoe is smooth and it has more of a ropey surface to it. Kind of looks like a bunch of kind of folded up ropes, um, but more of a smooth surface, not so craggly. Um, it has a lower viscosity, so it's a little more flowy. So it is a little bit more fast moving. Uh, in this case, about six miles per hour. So that's about a good jog. 
So this one's moving a little bit faster. But again, you can still get out of the way, um, but it's more hazardous to property. So two types of lava, Pahoyhoy and um, Ah. -ah. Another thing that comes out of volcanoes is volcanic gas. This can be, these can be given off by both active and dormant volcanoes, volcanoes that are sleeping. They can sometimes still give off a volcanic gas. And it's not always just from the main kind of vent of the volcano. This kind of stuff could also just come out the side. Some of the principal components of volcanic gas are water vapor from that wet melt, carbon dioxide, again, from that wet melt, as well as some sulfur-bearing compounds, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, which can be poisonous. So volcanic gas is actually the second greatest threat to human life during an eruption. <coughs> Lava, again, not so much. Volcanic gas, yes, more of a threat to human life, less so to property. Um, so here's, uh, I believe this is Kilauea. It's a volcano in Hawaii. You can see some water vapor coming out. Um, here's some other kind of volcanic gases. It looks like maybe being vented off the side of a volcano. Same here. This yellowish color is more indicative of a sulfur compounds, which in some cases can be poisonous, hence the, the mask that he's wearing. So again, volcanic gases can be the second deadliest threat in an eruption. It's the second scariest thing. Lava is not even on the scary to life scale. It's just get out of the way. Gases come in number two. Other stuff that comes out of volcanoes is called tephra. This is any of the ejected rock material from an er eruption. Not all volcanoes give off lava. Only some do. Others just shoot out a bunch of hot rock material. This stuff is known as tephra. Different types of tephra are classified by size. The smallest pieces of material ejected, rock material ejected from um, a volcano is known as ash. Anything less than two millimeters, which is very, very small. Next size up is lapilli, sometimes called cinders, anywhere between two millimeters and 64 millimeters. So that's anywhere from, from this two millimeters to 64 millimeters, so that size, something, uh, a rock fragment that size. Anything bigger than that is known as a volcanic bomb or volcanic block. It's kind of based on, on shape. Those are the largest. When tephra is ejected out of uh, a volcano, typically this is during an explosive volcanic event, you're probably not going to get much lava out of a volcano that shoots out a bunch of tephra. The largest material falls closest to the vent, due to gravity. The heavy stuff just kind of falls first, while the lighter stuff, like ash, can float on the wind for thousands of miles. So, kind of to illustrate the difference between a bomb, lapilli, and ash, kind of all in the same eruptive area. And again, how bombs typically fall pretty close to the vent, where ash can fall thousands of miles away. So besides the tephra, the stuff that gets shot up into the air, you also get some material that kind of races down the side of a, of a, um, of a volcano. And that material is known as a pyroclastic flow. So you got the tephra going this way. And you got this pyroclastic flow kind of coming down this way. So a pyroclastic flow um, are pyroclast pieces of volcanic material, tephra, that flow rapidly downhill and they're buoyed floating by on a, a cushion of essentially heat uh, and poisonous gas. So you get this hot rock material, super hot, racing down the side of a mountain. <coughs> it's super hot, <coughs> 1000 degrees, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, floating on poisonous gas. Oftentimes these are moving upwards of maybe two to 300 miles per hour as these pyroclastic flows race down a volcano. So you get this super fast, super hot material full of rocks and floating on poisonous gas. This is the greatest threat to human life during an eruption. Now, pyroclastic flows do not occur in all eruptions, but when they do, this is the greatest threat to human life for sure. And in fact, uh, can be up there as far as the uh, a, a very big effect on property damage as well. 
pyroclastic flows, they move so fast, they come without warning, they surprise all. If you're in one of these, that's that's it. If you're not crushed uh, or cut by the rock material or burnt to death or suffocate on the poisonous gas, then you're a superhuman because that's that's what's going to... There's no surviving this. There, there, there's no surviving this. So here's another example of a pyroclastic flow racing down uh, this volcano. It's some tephra ejected up, but some of that tephra kind of will fall back down and kind of race down. You can see it's just a little bit different consistency, more cauliflower broccoli looking. And this material here, just a little bit different color. Just something a little special about it, just a little bit heavier, wants to race downhill. Now, the victims of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the city of Pompeii um, succumbed to uh, the poisonous volcanic gases and it encased in pyroclastic flow. Again, the greatest threat to human life in the year 79, so a little uh, just under, a little over 1,900 plus years ago. So, um, Pompeii, the city at the base of Mount Vesuvius, a volcano. When the volcano erupted, it was, again, the poisonous gases did some work, but also a pyroclastic flow raced down, covered the entire town. The town was lost for thousands of years. It wasn't until like the 1800s or 1900s or something that archaeologists rediscovered the city, and everything in the city was just perfectly preserved. The ash from the pyroclastic flow just kind of preserved everything exactly as it was. Even, weirdly enough, the shapes of bodies. As they were digging out the city of Pompeii, they would find these open pits all of a sudden with a bunch of bones in them. And what they quickly figured out was in these pits, this is where someone died. They were encased in the pyroclastic flow and they died there. Their bodies decayed away. The bones were left, but it left behind this kind of mold of the body in this pit. And so what they would do when they started to come across these, they would fill them in with like plaster or cement dig out the cavity, and what's left is the shape of the body, how it died when it was encased in the pyroclastic flow. This happened in the middle of the night, so a lot of people were sleeping. It included adults, pets, uh, children. Yeah, they actually took some of these casts on tour, and they came to the Arizona Science Center a number of years back, and it was just kind of shocking to, to, see, to see these things. But yeah, the pyroclastic flow pretty much wiped out the city of Pompeii, lost to history until 100 or 200 years ago. So obviously when volcanoes erupt, there are some hazards. Pyroclastic flow is number one, volcanic ga gas is number two, lava is not even on that scale. Lava definitely hazardous to property, but not so much to life. Before we go on to the next section, let me give you another part of the super secret code. It is the number eight. You got me? The number eight. One more time. Number eight. So let's pause here. When we come back, we'll talk about the different types of volcanoes, which are determined by the magma composition that's feeding them. We'll see you back here in just a second. <laughs> 